they both look like <laughs> Ray. <laughs> So what was a personal goal that you want to leave as a legacy? How did you achieve that goal? Um, I would How are we doing today? Welcome back to Get In The Game mini series, okay? And today we are diving into some interesting topics, okay? We are talking about our captain years, okay? What does it take to be a captain? Everything involved, the HBCU dance captain, we're gonna cover it all. And also, we're gonna cover also our experiences with being an HBCU captain. So I brought along two people. Today we're talking with Sierra. I'm gonna let her introduce herself, so yeah. I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Sierra Hendricks. I graduated from North Carolina a and State University in 2017. My major was pre-law and I'm a current law student at North Carolina Central University. Um, I marched for Golden Delight from fall of 2013 to this first semester of 2017. Yes, she is absolutely amazing one of them most amazing person I've ever came in contact with. And I just love that, you know, we shared our journey together and <laughs> we have a crazy journey. <laughs> so blessed to work with not only Sierra, but also Brianna, okay? I'm gonna let her introduce herself. And if you don't know her, get to know her today, okay? You should learn her name. All right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> hey, everybody. So my name is Brianna Florence and I dance for Impact's Golden Delight. Um, from the years of, it's been such a um, long time, um, from the years 2013 to 2016. Yeah, so um, I served as a captain my last two years. So 2015 is 2015. Um, so yeah. That's my little intro. Yes. Okay, and as y'all know, she, uh, well, if y'all don't know, okay, she is an NFL cheerleader, okay? Yeah. You want to speak on yeah. that a little bit? Yeah, so um, I've been cheering for the Atlanta Falcons for, I just finished up my fourth season in the NFL. Um, so I've been actually joined the team right out of college when I graduated in 2017. So I've been with them and it's been really cool continuing my dance journey. Um, it's been awesome. So it's been a really nice um, activity to do outside of work, of course, because I do work a nine to five mm -hmm. um, for an IT company. So. I do that on the side. So Superwoman. Nice. Superwoman, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys, let's go ahead and dive on to our first topic, okay? So you ready, sis? Yeah, let's go. All right. So what was, I know your experience, but just let the viewers know, what was the experience of becoming a captain? Like, what did we have to do? Like, Did we have a audition process or did we just, you know, what was it like? How did we become a captain? Um, <laughs> that's a great question. So basically, uh, I, I want to believe that the staff definitely are watching you from day one. Um, but I think that Miss Tiffany did a great job with if you, even if you didn't have a leadership position, she still instilled those qualities in you. So she wanted everybody on the team to be a leader. So just because you didn't have the title, she still wanted, you know, everyone to have those leadership qualities. So whether it was integrity, you know, showing love to the team, uh, being able to lead in different ways, um, and not only learning how to lead, but to also be uh, learning how to follow. Right. So she always said that like you couldn't be a leader unless you knew how to follow. And so um, up until my time being a captain, um, we did a lot of exercises um, to actually know who we're on the team with. So we did a lot of personality quizzes and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but leading up to being a captain, it's funny because I really didn't know I was going to even be chosen to be a captain because when she announced my name as a captain, I literally was like, what is happening? Like, I was so surprised, but I think it's because, you know, everyone on the team works equally hard. So you, it's right. kind of hard to know who's going to be chosen as a captain. Um, and so like I said, she has those qualities in everyone along the way. So yeah it, it, it was really it was really interesting but i was like oh my gosh like it's gonna be such a big responsibility yes so. yes i remember that moment yeah. vividly, <laughs> vividly. Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> we were in the auditorium and she called captains and i was like 
I'm down there like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Are you doing me? So it was like, it was such a surprise. It was a great surprise because I want to say it was actually Valentine's Day. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so it was like, I'm okay. Like, you know, all the feels, I guess. It was, it was, it was really cool. Yeah, and if y'all don't know, we were captains together. Me and Sierra yes. both captains together. So yeah. that's why we just had that chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, our team of captain, I was asked, um, I received a phone call from the head coach and she asked me would I serve as a captain for the 2016 uh, season and I said yes and that's pretty short and simple about how, you know, I became a captain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's very like not traditional, especially with A&T. We have like different stuff going on every year so it's not always the same you know, every time a captain gets selected. So you just have to know what your school offers and what your staff, you know, expects of that and what they want as a captain. So, yeah. Okay, so our next question is, what are the qualities that exhibits a great captain? Like, what do I need to show the staff that I'm ready for this position? Well, first and foremost, you definitely need leadership. Um, of course, you know, exhibiting leadership shows the staff that you can step up to the plate when they're not around and be able to lead the girls into the right direction. Um, I would say next you need patience, resilience, and teamwork. Um, patience because you're dealing with a lot of different personalities. And you have to be patient and know that the vision is going to come eventually. And it's going to come quickly. But just give everybody some time. Um, believe in them and it'll it'll all come together and resilience and teamwork being able to you know take some of the difficult you know decisions discussions from your your coaches about you know what direction you're going in and being able to stick it out and stick through and then working with your team so being able to work with the team is also good to have yes that is very important. Uh, with being a leader, you're like the jail of everything. So you can't just, you know, I'm friends with you, but you know what I'm saying? You got you got to be friends with everybody. You know, it's a, every, it's a collective thing. You can't just pick and choose your favorites. So okay. yes, definitely. Being a team player. So you already kind of talked about the qualities, you know, that you should exhibit before you yeah. become a captain. So yeah. with those qualities, um, you have to uphold certain responsibilities. And one of them is rehearsal. Being that a captain is like the liaison between staff, between everybody, okay? You're dealing with it all, okay? So Absolutely. what would you say is our expectations of a captain during rehearsal? Oh, wow. Um, I think that the captain is pretty much a stand-in for the coach. So uh, Ms. Tiffany, who was our coach, um, if you haven't gotten that already, but um, she was our coach and uh, we pretty much were the stand-in for her. So we were like the right hand girl, if you, you know, want to put it that way. So we had to make sure that everyone knew the choreography. We had to make sure that everyone knew the counts. We mm -hmm. had to make sure that we were together with the music. We had to make sure that everyone was on the same exact page. Mm -hmm. And so it was a big responsibility trying to get 19 or 18 bodies on the same page. But, you know, we had to do it. And it wasn't easy, but it was definitely um, a welcome challenge. Uh, so it was it was different. Every practice brought different things. Every mm -hmm. practice was not the same as the last practice because again, not only dealing with nineteen bodies, but you're dealing with nineteen personalities. And so you kind of have to know, you know, who you're working with. So you kind of you kind of have to learn your team and how to lead them, and you also have to learn what kind of leader you are. Right. Um, so I think pairing those together, you kind of get like a magical combination. And I think that for us. Um, we like opposites attracted because we were different, but we wanted the same things for the team. We had the same love and passion for dancing. And so I think that we kind of came together and I was the more stern, let's get this done. That's why it was more of the lover, <laughs> the, the nurturer, the mom. Mom. <laughs> the mom. Um, and so I think that we were the perfect combination because you know, you had that bit of, okay, you had that tough love, but then you had the love love. And I think that, um, you know, if you can be one person and, it's, and you don't have those qualities and abilities, then I think that is perfect. But having that understanding of your team and yourself is, is very important. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Short and simple is get the job done. It's a task <laughs> <different>. <laughs> You, they send you a list of 
things that need to be completed by the end of the day because they have a bigger schedule that you might not know in order to achieve a performance by a certain time. So they send you this list and it could be anything from do a little bit of workouts, run a couple of laps for stamina. You might not know what the vision is until you get until they get there. Right. But run a couple of laps. I need you to pick out these three A counts, figure this out so that when they get there, they everything is learned and they can go ahead and shape and mold the show. As long as you do your part while they're not there, when they get there, they can also do their part and it just flows more efficiently. So I would say definitely with captains and being liaison between the directors, it definitely get get the job so the task done if they ask. Yes. Okay. And staff, like they uh, they depend on us. You know, they have to be able to trust us with their vision, with their girls, with their squad, with everything. So being a captain is not just about the game day, okay? Not just about stepping out and leading the girls. It's so much more. So, yeah, but we're going to get more into that. We're going to get more into that. <laughs> All right. So we're going to dive into our next one, okay? So um, during band camp, okay, we know that that's... <laughs> Right. Okay. First of all, let's laugh. Right. <laughs> so with band camp, you know, it's approaching for a lot of different bands right now. So if I'm a new captain um, and this is my first season, I want to know how do I have a successful band camp? What are some tips that you would give me if I was an upcoming captain this year for band camp? How can I have a successful band camp with my squad? I would say have a plan, but be flexible with your plan as well, because it's not going to always flow the way you want it to. But have a plan every day and try to execute that plan to the best of your ability. That way everybody can stay on track and you know what you're doing. And you're not just winging it all the time, but also be flexible so that if something does change, you're able to reshape the plan and continue to move forward. Also, wake up every day at the fresh start. Um, whatever happened the day before, let's not bring it into the next day. Let's go ahead and leave it in the day before because it's in the past. And go ahead and move forward with a fresh start, a clear mind, and just ready to work. Yep. Um, I think that the expectations, that's very important, set expectations with your squad. Um, so kind of give them a, a intro into what band camp is going to look like, kind of what they're going to be experiencing, kind of like an overview. And, you know, Miss Tiffany did this for us, um, but just kind of having that um, that communication with your team is very important so they kind of already know what to expect so they're not super surprised um, or shocked at kind of right. how much work you're going to be putting into it. But I think that also communicating um, the goals, like what you all are working towards is very important because if I'm on the team, sometimes it's hard to be blindly led, but if I yeah. know kind of where we're going and what goal we're trying to reach, it's very, it's very good, it's very important. Um, but that, yeah, I would say that's, that's and also have a positive attitude about the band camp, because again, band camp is not easy. I think that uh, we had a band camp that was three weeks yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Our bodies were super tired. We had to get up at like 6 a.m. and we weren't done until I don't even know what time. Like 9, was. maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, you're going to need that positive energy. You're going to need, you know, someone kind of pushing the team along and being a backbone. And I think that a captain pretty much serves that purpose. Yes, and you have to serve that purpose. You have to be there. You have to be that glue. You have to be Absolutely. that 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 girl. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's actually it's tough, but you gotta do it. Yes, because band camp is long for everybody. So <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep those spirits up. Like I remember us. You know, <laughs> we had to take some naps throughout the day to make sure that we get through this. You know what I'm saying? We had to make sure we did certain things. Hey, check on everybody's mental health. Hey, maybe we need to go get some ice cream to pep everybody up. You know what I'm saying? We had to keep, we had to get creative with ways to keep the squad excited because band camp is hard. Then the whole season itself is hard. So you got to find ways to make it exciting for your sisters because y'all are a sisterhood. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was one of the main things or one thing that stuck out to you that was a struggle for you as a captain? And how would you... Um, you know, advise future captains not to make those same mistakes or just some precautionary things that they can do? Um, I would say uh, communication and like delivery on how you're trying to communicate things. Um, 
you got to know who you're speaking to at the time and know that you cannot speak to the people the same way that you speak to everybody else. Know the your team and know how they'll receive information in the best way that you want them to understand what you're saying. Um, sometimes we think that we can just communicate with people any way that we want to and I said it the way I said it right. and that's the end of it. That's not the end of it because now you have people mad, attitudes, and now nobody wants to work, and now you're stuck, and you can't get the job done. So um, it's being able to learn your team and learning how best to communicate with each girl because each girl individually matters, and being able to deliver what you need to say in the best way and in the most effective way. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would say what I struggled with as a captain was making sure that everyone was on the same page and everyone had the same goal in mind, the same end goal. Mm -hmm. um, and so that can be tough, again, dealing with a lot of different personalities and, you know, everyone's not dealing with the same thing in life. So when it comes to college, college is very stressful in itself. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not college, you know, for captains who want to be captain in high school, but, you know, people have outside things going on. And so just kind of being more sensitive to those things and making sure that everyone is, you know, able to kind of take the outside and put it away right the moment being um just so we can all work towards the same common goal so i would say for me it was just making sure i was on the same page as well as communicating um being on the same page with the team so yeah yeah and communication is big with any relationship Absolutely. any relationship you come across you know communication is going to be key mm -hmm. so I yeah agree. so definitely as a captain communication is you need that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, with that, each person is different, like she was saying. So everybody learns different. Everybody does everything different. So you have to not only, you know, be that captain role. You also have to be that sister and knowing, you know, you got to know when my when my sister is not okay. Like you know, with us being captains together. You know, it's a great thing when you have two people working together for a squad and they just click. Cause me and Sierra, we just clicked. Like, I don't know, that year was just so magical because I knew when she needed to step back, she knew when I needed to step back. Like it was just a feeding energy and it was no competition. It was just, we truly have fun our captain year. And that's what it's about. You have to make those relationships and those bonds together to make it, to make it fun and worthwhile, you know? Mm -hmm. True. What was a person? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so what was a personal goal that you want to leave as a legacy or a part of your legacy? And did you think you achieved that goal? Um, I would say a personal goal for me was definitely sisterhood. Um, my freshman year at ENT, my rookie year, I gained 11 boyfriends. <laughs> best friends. Yes. Like, these girls are my world. We speak all the time. We are extremely close. And that's something that Golden Delight gave me. And I'm just so thankful for that. So when I became captain, I wanted the same thing. For not just the new girls that are coming in, but also for the, the members that are continuing on the team. That the sisterhood is so essential. You just never know who's going to just walk into your life. So um, that was something I really pushed. Of course, everybody doesn't get along all the time. Even me and my sisters don't always get along. But still having that type of bond with somebody that you share, that you basically live your entire life with, <laughs> because that's what dancing for GD is. But <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I would say, yeah, I would say um, I feel like I did achieve it. Um, just because of the relationships I have with some of the members that are on the team that are not just my sisters, my relationship with you um, became stronger that year too. So yeah, yeah sister was, was definitely my legacy. And I would definitely say you definitely achieved that. <laughs> like Sierra is like the best sister you ever want to have, okay? <laughs> what I wanted to leave behind was just uh, a determination, uh, well, a determined type of work ethic and the 
the flow of choreography. Um, because at the time when I was, you know, uh, the dance group was on the right, I was also studying dance. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes it's important for there to be a flow to choreography yes. and um, to also have like a determined work ethic to make sure everyone's just always encouraged to be their best 100%. So when I was in practice, I made sure that I set the mm -hmm. example about always going for 100%, always going full out. Um, and I think that from what I've seen, what I've been caught up on, I think that I did leave that behind um, as far as the thirst for uh, unique choreography. Yes. Um, so I, I think that I kind of, I think I reached that goal during my time there. And, you know, maybe that has carried on throughout the years. I would definitely there. say yes, because, you know, with me, you know, I marched a year after you left. So, yes. and I was captain that year. So your presence was still well on the team. Yes, yeah. yes, things change, and y'all know people come in and out. Not everybody's gonna have the same ability and skills every year. So yeah. things change, but that choreography shift in 2015 was something serious. Okay, we want to know because I did it too. <laughs> but I love the challenge though. Breeze choreography yeah. always challenged us to. What 2015 when you saw that field dance? What was it? Um, I can't even think of the show. I think we tore batons when we tore the batons, and I forgot what dance feature it was. Mm hmm. Barracuda. I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. Yes, that routine. Yes, 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 yes. Made up that choreography. You know what I mean? So, certain certain stuff that y'all saw, it was Brie <laughs> that year. It was Brie. <laughs> Definitely that was Brie. I would like to say we all, we, we all played parts. Yes, we did. Yeah. Always put in pieces of choreography because it's like little pieces of everyone that go into you know the end product. So I I I, I, I think it was all of us together. Right. It was all of us together. <laughs> so okay. So um, being that innovation is just the key. It's just the key across everything. You know, keep things fresh. What are some ways that we can still be able to deliver those new things, but keep those traditional things alive? What are some things that maybe you did or maybe some things that you maybe have a suggestion about on keeping traditions alive as a captain? Um, a suggestion to me, I think tradition is very important because you just don't want to get lost in innovation because then you forget the ones that came before you. And then when people come back, you know, during homecoming, it's a big family celebration. You don't really have anything to share if everything's new. So I would say, um, you know, a lot of things we did was relearn the old routine so that when um, the alumni would come back, then we could dance together and share that moment together. Also, just being involved with your alumni as well, you know, to an extent, but introducing Definitely. each other know each other, reaching out. They still were, you know, now I'm an alum, now I'm older, I'm in my career, I have my life. I can help somebody still who is in college or undergrad trying right. to figure it out. So just building those connections as well as teaching old stuff too, like, and just learning where it come, came from and the history and all that stuff is, is good to keep the tradition alive. And it's important too. It's very important because going to light would not have been anywhere if it wasn't for, you know, for our predecessors, you know, they, they, they set this thing up, Golden Light or any dance I sting at, nobody would be where they at if somebody else didn't, you know, step in those shoes and make that stepping stone for everybody else to build on, you know, so it's very mm -hmm. important to keep tradition alive. Um, I think that as far as, you know, because I think every HBCU auxiliary has a look um, when it comes to choreography and fans, and I think that just kind of making sure that we kind of, again communicate the elements like kind of like how to do certain things um and not straying too far away from who we are is very yeah. important um so I, I think that again captains are responsible for that making sure that you know because usually a captain is a captain is not going to be a rookie captain's not going to be you know a, a first year so we've seen you know kind of the inner workings and you know the outs of what we do and like our look and our elements so i think that captains are more so responsible for making sure that that look stays alive so just kind of making sure that um well i think that some things that we did were we would go back and look at old videos mm -hmm. Um, just to make sure we were kind of keeping up with the expectation of what going to like look like. So I think that that's very important and always consistently studying your yes. 
your team and the movement throughout the year. I think that is very important. Um, I know for a fact that uh, Sierra, who's also going to be, you know, featured, she could not stop talking about party time on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. She should is captain. And yep. so I think that that's important because you get to study and see. You kind of don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. So I right. think that we did a really good job of, you know, watching those videos and making sure that we kept the traditional look of going to light. So I think that studying your team and consistently studying your team is very important. Yes. Not everyone recognized that delegation is very, very important when it comes to a leadership role. What are some ways that you delegated um, choreography? Because everybody wants to know, do captains make it up? Do, you know, do the new girls make it up? Who makes up the choreography, you know? So as a captain, we have that, not power, but the ability to delegate that. So what did that look like for us? Um, for us, it looked like, okay, we have the technique girls up here, and we got the, the powerful girls up here, so I need y'all to go make something real technical, or I need y'all to go make something real powerful over here, because we don't know everything. And then some of, some of the girls were more creative than we were, so everybody would come up with their own accounts, or come up with their own routine, and we would all showcase it to each other, and then piece it together bit by bit. You could take two counts from one girl, and then four counts from another, and then next thing you know, you have a dance. Yes. Um, also, with being a captain too, you, with having another person in the leadership team with you, it helps because it's just not always you talking, always you at the forefront. So this is my moment to shout out Kiki. <laughs> Kiki. Kiki. Was so great. <laughs> For us, she was yes, she was. Thing, and um, Des and I just, you know, needed a chance to step back uh, and also give Kiki the opportunity to grow and learn as a leader because she became captain next, the next year. Um, we gave her those opportunities, like, you know, we practice today. Uh, go ahead and uh, piece this together. You know, it's you. We trust you. Do what you need to do. Like, yeah. <laughs> What it was like. <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. Kiki is definitely, I, we could talk all day about Kiki, first of all, because she's just so amazing. But she was definitely, she was like our leadership in training because we knew Baby Girl was going to be captain, okay? If you didn't know, you know, she showed you, okay? But we knew that she was going to be captain one day. So having her in that role was very important, not only for her to grow, but it helped us out, you know? So. Having those roles or having those um, other leadership positions do help out the captain role. So it's not just the captain doing everything, okay? I promise y'all, not one captain is doing everything on one team. It's, it's a squad effort. Um, some of the ways we did that was pretty much just being involved. I think we were very hands-on as captains. I think that's very important. Because when you're doing something, you don't just want to seem like you're you're kind of throwing orders around. Because not everybody is going to um, kind of receive that the yeah. way you, you know, mean it. Like, everyone doesn't want to be lost around. So I think that we were very hands-on and being involved and actually, like, if we say, okay, we need eight counts of choreography, actually doing it with our team. Like, okay, we need four counts of eight. I'm actually kind of piecing it together and being able to say, okay, um, such and such, can you give me eight counts? Okay, you can you give me eight counts? Okay, can you give me eight counts? And then, you know, me and you might go to opposite sides and we'll also work on eight counts and then we're able to kind of, you know, find a flow in choreography. So I think being hands on and actually not, not just watching your team work, but actually doing the work with them is very important so they can know that, you know, you're in the trenches with them and you're not just right. kind of like, you know, it, you, your team is more as a leader when you're hands-on versus just kind of like barking you know, orders being, yeah it's, it's it's very important to hands-on and to be involved so i think that that's one of the things that we did that you know meant a lot to people and meant a lot to you know our team as a whole um i think that another thing well i think that that pretty much the number one thing that we did it didn't it didn't matter what it was whether it's choreography whether it was you know workouts whether it was stands we were always hands-on and always involved and in doing it with the Yep, and that's very important to get down there and say, hey, you know, just because I have this leadership position does not mean that I'm any better than any of y'all that's here. Absolutely, so. and I think that um, it sometimes when you're busy as a captain, because, you know, we do have a lot of responsibilities, so we're not just kind of in charge of, you know, the team. We're also in charge of getting tasks done that, you know, our coaches, you know, want us to get done. And I think that, that 
just making sure that everybody knew the importance of what we were asking them to do was super important. So if Miss Tiffany asked us to, um, you know, space everybody, so right. do for patients, just making sure that they understood that, you know, this is important and this will not only help us, you know, along the way, you know, this will be easier the next practice and the next practice after that because we've already gotten it out the way. And I think that we were very proactive. Yes. Um, so sometimes we read Miss Tiffany's mind before she even had to tell us, which was very helpful because it was less stressful. So imagine if you have five tasks to do, you don't want to do them on the day that you're asked. If you already know it's coming up, it's easier to kind of break it off into, okay, well, Monday we can do this, Tuesday we can do that, mm -hmm. Wednesday we can do that. So, you know, by that time, we're not mm -hmm. stressed out trying to do five different things we've already cut down some of our work and our stress. So I think that, you know, just kind of knowing what our coach wanted and what she was expecting was a lot easier. So we were able to communicate the importance of those things and kind of like the timeline uh, to the team. So it made it a lot easier for everyone to kind of work together and get things done, so. So, and speaking on, you know, us delegating the choreography, you know, new people, they come in and out the program. Yeah. So mm -hmm. new things and new, dances are going to come new uh eight counts and all that's going to come reputation is key okay and i know for going to light our audition process is we look at your instagram we look at everything about you because your reputation becomes our reputation now so being that reputation is everything how can someone keep a positive um image on and off campus especially once they have that name especially as a captain Mm -hmm. I would say, uh, as, as far as your reputation on and off campus, it's treating every moment that you meet somebody like it's first impression, because everybody's going to remember you. Everywhere you go, present yourself in a way that you want to be remembered, that that might be the only moment they see you, but they could tell their friends and their friends could see you later. So it's not treating yourself in a light that you don't want to be seen in. So respect yourself. Don't post certain things that you don't want following you around in your life. Um, just being a good person all around the best that you can and just being respectful to yourself and your image and your reputation and what you want for your future. So that's the best way I, I feel like. You <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, so let's get into some funner topics, okay? What was your most memorable performance as a captain? <laughs> um, well, I have two, but the first one was, I think it was the block party at the beginning of the semester. Mm -hmm. My Delta Line sisters recorded me and that video went viral. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. I mean, like, messages everywhere. I didn't think so. I was just kind of having fun. It was more of a dress down performance. Mm -hmm. so. But they that. were the way they reacted, the way they were so hype about it, just kind of helps, you know, with the I guess the publicity of the of the video. But mm -hmm. it was nice to see and be bonded over for a little bit. <laughs> but to me, I feel like my most memorable performance was the one that um, our last performance, where my mom got to see me from the sideline. Well, all of our parents got to see me. Right. From the yeah. That meant a lot to me. Um, yes. My mom has seen me perform before, but that up close and personal and to just watch the entire performance uh, from the sideline, you know, I, I enjoyed it. It was very memorable to me. Yes, definitely. I still watch that today, y'all. It's still getting emotional yeah. like it happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely a beautiful moment. Like I didn't know anything about that, but that's another story time for another day. If y'all want to know about it, comment down below and I'll make it happen for you. <laughs> um, I honestly think my most memorable performance was my first performance, which was I remember we were wearing we were wearing uh blue leotards with our tights. Mm -hmm. Like the leotard had a low back. Um, it had our logo on the front in white. We had on white skirt socks and white sneakers. Um, and it was a performance on campus. Mm -hmm. And that was our first time, you know, coming out and being featured, um, you know, for the year. Yeah. And I think that performance was so fun because the energy was so crazy. Yeah, it was. And I remember, I think that was my first year also throwing baton. Yeah, I think um, so too. Yeah. I think. I'm not sure. It, Maybe it wasn't, but I do remember that the mm -hmm. marching, um, you know, I was, in, you know, in front and I was with a baton and it was yep. 
it was just the energy was really crazy that performance mm -hmm. and i remember we did trap queen and like some other songs and it was just i think that it was just so energetic like yeah. the energy was so crazy and i remember that day like it was yesterday it was so fun <laughs> it was so fun like it was it was i probably would say that's the most memorable yes i it's definitely remember that too it's always hard performing in front of peers, I think, sometimes. And so to have, you know, the university standing out there, you know, and they were even hyped. So it was, we, we were just really good that year. It was, it was, it was good time. Yep. <laughs> good vibes. Good yeah, vibes. for sure. So, okay, what was your last performance like? Because your first performance is something different, you know? Yeah. So your last performance meant more, in a sense. Yeah. So what, what was your last performance like? Um. My last performance was for sure, I think like bittersweet. And I think it's because I was on the fence of coming back the next year or mm -hmm. just calling it quits. But I decided, because I was a double major yep. um, um, in college, so I majored in dance and apparel design. And I think that it was just kind of time for me to focus on graduating. Yes. Um, that was very important for me because, you know, being a double major, uh, especially with having fashion as you know a major it required a lot of outside work and yeah. I wanted to make sure I was dedicated to that before I graduated um, because again I was trying to make life decisions and I was trying to make sure I was prepared for you know the next level of my life so it was definitely bittersweet um, but it was nonetheless I, I made the best of it um, I think every performance every last performance of the season everyone makes yeah. the best of it because you just kind of never know what the next year is going to bring so yeah I, I definitely agree with you there i definitely yeah. agree with you okay <laughs> so being that um honda was our last performance stepping out on the field as going to light how was that performance for you like what was your uh i guess your whole experience like you know how did you feel you know your last performance I was, it was bittersweet, I would say. I was ready to, to go, like, just because it's so draining on your body that um, after like four years, you just kind of get tired and everything. Like you, you know, you just want to try something new, something different, mm -hmm. but I just love performing. I love the environment. It was just always so great to get dressed up with my sisters and just do what we love. So after the performance, me and my Don't July sisters, Ashley, like Kelly, we all formed a little circle and just had a whole moment. My poor beard. Hey, y'all. Stop. Having a moment. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> last rip. We love them. Oh, God. Just emotional moment because this was it. This was all that we. This was, this was over at this point. And I was at that moment, as soon as we walked off the field, I missed it. Yep. And I was like, I just, I'm, I wanna I want to do it again. To, I want to do it again. Can we just go one more time? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was, it was very emotional, it was very bittersweet, but I missed it immediately as soon as I finished. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I miss it to a certain extent, <laughs> but yeah. after that moment, yeah. definitely was like, okay like it's like numbing almost it's like okay what do i do uh what's next <laughs> you know what i mean but That's it comes right <laughs> <laughs> yes your last performance should always be something that's truly important to you no matter if you're a captain veteran whatever even if it's your only year that you march that last performance should something should stick with you forever well sis that is all that i all the questions i know we've been talking but y'all <laughs> I love this child, okay? <laughs> it's like my little sister right here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, anything that you want to leave my captains with? Any aspiring captains? Any upcoming captains? Or even just somebody on the team? You know, anything that you have for my captains? Um, one big thing I do have for your captains is that it does not start when you are a sophomore, a junior, a senior. Whenever you decide, oh, maybe I could be a captain, it starts as soon as you join that team. Actually, it starts at auditions. Yeah. It, they are watching you from the first moment that they see you, seeing how you help other girls in auditions all, when you already have it. How do you interact with other people? How do you talk to them? How do you talk to other people? How do you carry yourself? 
all of that is important and shows qualities in you and whether or not they feel you can lead their team. They feel that you can be an extension of them while they're not at practice. So I would say start at the very, very beginning, as soon as you walk into audition. So if you're aspiring to be a captain, show them that you want to be one from the very beginning. <laughs> Y'all heard it from her, okay? Y'all heard it from her. <laughs> but any tips or anything, any last comments or anything you want to leave to my captains, any aspiring dancers, any aspiring captains or anything? Yeah. Um, I'll just leave one thing and I'll just say keep keep being inspired. And even if you're not always inspired, because sometimes in our craft, you know, we we can't find that inspiration, but just stay inspired and keep on growing because the more you know yourself, the better leader you can be for other people, mm -hmm. um, the better captain you can be, the better teammate you can be, you know, the better follower you can be. Um, so, you know, I'm all into growth and I think that learning yourself, it just makes for just a better experience um, as a leader. So that's all. Yes, thank you guys so much. <laughs> for watching yes. today's episode and thank you so much sis for being on this episode i truly appreciate it. make sure y'all go follow yes, her <laughs> you know I do. yes ma'am <laughs> but make sure you guys follow my sis on instagram i'll be posting her her social media handle somewhere on the screen okay so make sure y'all go and follow her and that is all that we have for you guys today and that is what well on period and we're both out bye <laughs>